Good evening, everybody. We are so glad that you are here. We are grateful that you have joined us for tonight um, for our second annual family workshop. My name is Meredith Baker. I'm the principal at Brent Elementary. And I am joined by plenty of people here from our Fennytown team that are really excited to offer you a virtual family workshop. Um, we have a really tight schedule tonight, and so I want to get us started. I'm going to do a few housekeeping details, um, say two thank yous or maybe three, um, and then introduce our wonderful guest speaker. So first of all, we ask that you keep yourself muted tonight um, with this large group, and we've got, I know people are at home, we can hear dogs and all kinds of things, so we want to make sure that we can hear the presenters. So make sure to keep yourself muted throughout the presentation. Um, Mr. Anderson has put in, and I know that he will put um, it at again, the PDF link for the workshop. And so this will kind of be your guide for the evening. So as you are um, navigating from session to session, you will be able to click on the links with the PDF that Mr. Anderson um, created, as well as has put in the chat. Um, so being on this new format, what we're going to have to do is you will have to go from Zoom to Zoom. So in order to get to our next session, you will have to leave this Zoom. Um, you can either click on the PDF directly and it'll Zoom will alert you and tell you that you need to leave, or you can exit it and then enter a new session through the Zoom. Um, after you have attended the, um, sorry, I just got thrown off because I all I can see is my face right now. Um, after we get started um, and we have our keynote speaker and then our two um, sessions, you will come back to the whole group. And then that way uh, we'll get ourselves closed out for the evening. Mr. Anderson will um, talk to everybody. Um, at the end of Dr. Ammerman's talk, we will save a few minutes for questions. So as you have questions, you can put them into the chat and our Finneytown staff will um, filter those questions and then answer, or hopefully we'll have time for you to get those answered from our guest speaker for the evening. Um, I have two big thank yous, um, our planning team for finding a creative way to have our family workshop, um, even in our digital world right now with everything that's going on. So I'm glad that we were able to still make this event possible. Um, secondly, all of our teachers and their willingness to share their knowledge with you, um, and I'm just really excited for us to get started. And so to get everything kicked off, I'm going to welcome our guest speaker for the evening. I'm going to read his bio because I don't want to mess it up. So I'm going to look down at my piece of paper, but um, as soon as we um, introduce him, we will get started. Robert T. Ammerman is a professor of pediatrics in the Division of Behavioral Medicine at Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center, University of Cincinnati College of Medicine and the scientific director of Every Child Succeeds. He received his PhD in clinical psychology from the University of Pittsburgh. Dr. Ammerman's interests include the promotion of emotional and behavioral health in young children and the prevention of mental health disorders. He has co-developed parent support programs for groups and families in the home, treatment of maternal mental health problems, supporting social and emotional learning in schools, and providing behavioral health preventative care in pediatric settings. So everybody, please virtually uh, join me in welcoming Dr. Ammerman. Uh, thank you, ha happy to be here uh, and uh, be able to talk to you. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. I've got a couple of slides to sort of help me along with the talk. And there it is. We'll cross our fingers. So far, so good. People see it? Yes, we can see you. Perfect. We'll go into presentation mode here. Perfect. Very good. Okay, so I, I, I actually spent a, a, a minute even thinking about the title and wound up uh, sort of inserting the sort of and after into uh, the supporting children's emotional and behavioral health during the pandemic, just to acknowledge what a lot of people are talking about in, um, uh, in education and uh, uh, pediatrics and, and psychology. So sort of recognizing that, that, that even as 
we, we, we get back to uh, sort of our previous uh, state and move out of uh, uh, this, this pandemic, uh, there, there are probably still going to be issues and challenges that our children are going to face and that we're going to face too. So th this is, although this is a child focused presentation I put together, I'm going to be talking a lot about um, adult emotional and behavioral health too because it's, it's important that we really look at both kids and adults as we think about this. Uh, I have a short period of time, <clears throat> but what I'm hoping to do is, is to cover at least some key points about uh, how the pandemic has affected emotional and behavioral health in children, uh, what kinds of things to look for, when we should get concerned, and, and when additional help uh, should be sought. And, and then what, what families can do to best support kids uh, and themselves as they uh, navigate through these uh, difficult and, and challenging times. But I wanna start off with just sort of three principles, uh, three, three things about sort of child development and the science of child development that can kind of ground us in thinking about, uh, about the pandemic and its impacts uh, first, this first bullet, children thrive under four conditions, nurturing and love, stimulation, safety, and stability. And if you look at really the last 50 years of research on child development, these four things come out as being sort of the, the essential supports for children uh, to, to, to thrive and to uh, uh, meet their optimal potential. Uh, so this is what kids need. And of course, the, the pandemic impacts all four of these uh, in, in perhaps different ways and different families and in different places. Uh, but that's where our concern is. But these are the sort of foregrounding the pillars. I think of them as sort of pillars of uh, optimal child development. The second is the increased recognition of how important parental emotional and behavioral health is for children. And uh, for children to be emotionally and behaviorally healthy, it's important that moms and dads are emotionally and behaviorally healthy too. So that's why I'm going to be talking about both of those. And, and that's a, just a real interest of mine because I think it's so important. The third has to do with the fact that all of us uh, uh, have sort of characteristics, uh, uh, traits, personality uh, characteristics, temperament, uh, ways in which we interact with each other in which we sort of process what happens to us in the world. Uh, these often emerge early in life and some of them can be pretty stable. So some of us, for example, are a little more anxious than others. And uh, that uh, anxiety we may carry with us from situation to situation. Uh, uh, we may be more optimistic or we may be more pessimistic. They're, they're, they're sort of different sort of, sort of traits. These things are important because when we face something like the uh, COVID pandemic and the stressors that accompany it, uh, we, we bring to it sort of styles of dealing with stressful and challenging situations. Some of those styles help us. Some of those may make things even more challenging. So this is true with uh, children as well. Uh, 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 you know, some children are shy, some children are more outgoing. All of these things, they, they, they kind of matter. So I wanted to sort of lay that out there as sort of a principle to start. But this fourth bullet is we're, we're, we're all in a position where we can make great changes in our lives. And when we face challenges, there are ways in which we can overcome those challenges and, and learn new ways to overcome those challenges. So there's a lot of flexibility in, in, uh, uh, in human psychology. And uh, uh, that, that's just important to note in terms of meeting our potential. I also wanna talk about just a few basic things about stress and coping. Uh, stress, of course, is perfectly normal and part of life, and we all experience it in a variety of different ways. But there are features of stress that we, we want to focus our attention on. One is severity. 
So when stress is really severe, that can of course be very disruptive and challenging. But the other is sort of persistence and duration. So persistence is, uh, you know, stress that, uh, that's there most of the time. And of course, duration, it's there for a long time. The pandemic for all of us really focuses on the persistence and the duration. For some of us, we also have experienced some of the more severe stressors associated with it. But that persistence and duration uh, uh, can, can really have an impact. On, on children's emotional behavioral health, but also uh, uh, adults. So sometimes people in the stress world, they talk about what they call major life events, uh, you know, big things that happen, uh, uh, marriage, divorce, a new job, moving to a new city, changing schools, you know, for, for, uh, for children. Uh, but there are also these, what they call daily, uh, uh, daily hassles. Uh, sort of the day-to-day -day kinds of stressors and they have a really big impact and we've come to appreciate that over the last sort of 20 or 30 years and of course stress can affect us both in terms of our physical health as well as our uh, uh, emotional health the second piece i want to mention about this though is coping and i want to underscore the importance of social support over the last 30 years there's just been a ton of research that's shown that social support is uh, uh, critical uh, to us being able to cope with stress. Uh, it's, it's just very powerful to have people who, who can help us, who we can talk to, we can bounce ideas off of us, they support us. All of those are, are really important ingredients and that's gonna be a theme uh, over the next few minutes. And also that there are specific things we can do to cope, so specific skills we can develop whether it's deep breathing, or many of you have probably heard of mindfulness. Um, so there are things we can do that help us weather some of the uh, uh, stressors that we experience, even if we can't always make those uh, stressors go away. And in the case of the pandemic, we've got, we we're limited, obviously, uh, at least as individuals in terms of what we can do. Writing down sort of all the different things that have happened during the pandemic, I came up with this list. I'm sure it's not exhaustive and there are things that, that, that we could add to it. Uh, but over this past uh, almost year now, uh, we've experienced uh, disruptions in our routines. Kids, of course, and in particular, kids have obviously had disruptions uh, in school, an important source of routine. And, and structure in, in, in their lives. We've all been, because of quarantining, more isolated, disconnected from others. Uh, our social interaction has changed. I mean, we're doing it now. I mean, here we are communicating with each other over a video conference, and it's good that we can do it. And it's, it's good that we have this uh, channel to communicate, but we've had to get used to it because it's not the same as face-to-face -face communication. And uh, the, the, there are elements we lose uh, when we communicate in, in, in this way. Uh, and, and, and that's been disrupted. There's uncertainty and fear. Uh, you know, it's, 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 it's a virus. It can, it, can, it can make us sick. It can make our loved ones sick. Uh, uh, for many people, of course, it, 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 it has. Uh, and that creates uh, 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 um, emotional upset that, that, that we're concerned about. We all have all these new rules, right? Masks, wash our hands all the time, six feet, social distancing. I don't know if you've had the experience of watching a television show and wondering when are we going to have television shows where everyone's wearing a mask? Uh, you know, so I'm, I'm sure they're in the works. Uh, maybe they're already happening and I miss them. Uh, but these sort of new rules. Uh, and of course, uh, a, a number of us have experienced very serious consequences in the form of uh, economic hardship, losing jobs, uh, losing child care uh, uh, that, that, that have had sort of a real uh, big impact um, on us. However, and I put down in green here on the bottom, uh, when people have done surveys, and we actually did a survey uh, in my uh, group at uh, Cincinnati Children's Hospital, did a survey of families of two to five year old kids. And we found that even though uh, families told us about all of these uh, sort of disruptive impacts, they also talked about some positive aspects of the pandemic, being able to spend more time with their kids 
having opportunities to have creative ways of uh, uh, being together and uh, playing together and working uh, and, and supporting each other. So there have been those elements as well uh, that are strengths that we wanna sort of keep and, and, and build on going forward. The kinds of stressors that we see in, in the pandemic lead to these kinds of uh, uh, reactions and symptoms. Uh, you'll recognize them all, anxiety, worry, confusion, uncertainty, guilt that we can't uh, you know, perhaps do things for our children that we would like to be able to do or for ourselves. Uh, depression and loneliness. Loneliness is a big one. That disconnection is, uh, 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 can, can really impact us and, and, and can impact children in particular, and is very strongly related to depression and anxiety. So loneliness is something that uh, uh, psychologists in particular uh, pay attention to. Uh, boredom, right? We've had stretches of, of, of boredom if we're, we're, we're housebound and irritability, frustration, sleep problems. So this probably isn't an exhaustive list either, uh, but these are all things that uh, probably all of us have experienced to a certain degree. Uh, uh, some of us may have them uh, more consistently and more severely, and uh, we, we, we get more concerned about that. Uh, I wanted to show this, uh, this graph. It's from an article that just came out in the journal Pediatrics. Uh, where the authors did a survey of uh, 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 parents around the country, and they asked them to, uh, uh, to, as part of the survey, as a result of the pandemic, has your physical health or your child's physical health changed, or has your mental health or your child's mental health changed? And in this graph on the left, that's the physical health and all the bars on the right that's the mental health and you can see they were given three options no change that's the one in the middle with the tall bars uh things have actually gotten better that's on the left uh hand side and then things have gotten worse so we're particularly interested in the worse part and as you can see Parents are reporting 17.7% are saying that their physical health is, has worsened. Uh, but if you move to the mental health, we see bigger uh, kind of reports of, of things getting worse during the pandemic with almost 27% of parents saying that their own mental health has changed for the worse during the pandemic. And 14.3% of their children's uh, 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 mental health has, has, has moved in the, in the worst direction during this time. Those are big changes. Those are large numbers when we apply them across uh, uh, the, the country. So these are things we're worried about. So, uh, and, and, and we are concerned and we wanna, we wanna create supports uh, for children and, and, and for families. Now, children have uh, their way of expressing uh, 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 being, being challenged by and being adversely uh, impacted uh, by the pandemic and the stressors that come from it. Sometimes they can't articulate this directly or very clearly, or they don't, particularly in younger children, they might not have the words or the depth of understanding uh, to talk directly about it, but we can see it. Right, we can see it in 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 their in their behavior, and uh, things like anxiety and nervousness, worry, not being able to stop, you know, being concerned ab about uh, 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 what's happening. Sleep problems, a very sensitive indicator of children's distress. Younger children may have uh, more difficulty separating uh, from parents. We don't see this as much in older kids, but uh, it, it's, it's something uh, uh, that we look out for. You may see age regression where kids sort of uh, act uh, in a way that's sort of from an earlier stage of their development. They act in ways maybe when they were a few years younger. That kind of regression is something you see in, 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 in stressful situations. They may have aches and pains, stomach aches, sort of... Um, um, 
just just sort of complaints about physical discomfort that probably aren't due to you know having eaten the wrong thing or something like that, uh, but are but are reflections of, of stress and anxiety, or they may they may act out. They may be more uh, oppositional or or, or, or non compliant, and and uh, even when they're anxious, we see those kinds of behaviors. So these kinds of signs of distress. This, this is when we get uh, uh, more concerned and um, uh, may want to you know, do something more sort of proactive uh, in the form of an intervention. But there are lots of things that uh, you can do and that we can do uh, in, in, in settings in which we, uh, uh, in which we care uh, uh, for children. Uh, the first is, is, is talking, uh, just talking and listening. It's just so powerful to provide uh, both children and adults with just an outlet to, uh, um, to sort of think out loud, uh, to be heard, and to, to have feelings of distress and worry and anxiety, you know, validated. And, and uh, it, it's, it's, just, it's just very powerful. So giving children an opportunity uh, to talk and to use their words and, and, and to, of course, listen and take them very seriously and, and validate them. Uh, uh, very good thing. Uh, reassurance. Uh, uh, there, there are aspects of the pandemic that, of course, are, are, are very concerning. I mean, you can't tell them absolutely everything is going to be fine no matter what. We know that uh, that may not necessarily be the case, but we can reassure them that they're safe and um, uh, you, you can reassure them that you, you're looking out for them and that your family is, is, is all working together and your community and your schools are working together uh, uh, to keep everyone uh, uh, safe and healthy. Uh, praise is very powerful. It's, it's of course very powerful for kids just in general, but particularly during times of stress, praise is, is really important. Uh, noticing when children are uh, you know, uh, working well, playing well, coping well, pointing it out, saying, "Oh, I'm so proud of you," and so impressed that you can uh, that 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 you're you're able to, uh, you know, uh, uh, stick with the schoolwork, or that you're 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 playing so nicely, uh, you know, with your brother or your sister. Uh, uh, children really, uh, you know, eat that up and, and, and carry that with them. Uh, uh, so very powerful. And they may need, need more now uh, under the circumstances, given the impacts of uh, the pandemic. You can use and model coping skills. That is, they can see you and watch you and you can teach them. Deep breathing is a very powerful relaxation approach. And, uh, you know, most psychologists teach people when they have an opportunity how to do deep breathing and it's not hard to do, uh, you know, taking very deep breaths and letting that breath out slowly has demonstrated a, a effects on uh, heart rate and blood pressure. Very, another sort of powerful technique that, that can help in, in the moment uh, uh, trying to diffuse uh, uh, anxiety or worry or concern. Uh, just to sort of stop and stopping and, and thinking if you find yourself getting very irritable or if kids are beginning to sort of spin in, in a negative direction, just sort of a, a stopping and thinking moment can really diffuse those situations and pull kids back and pull yourself back. And positivity, focusing on positive things uh, in, 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 in kids' lives uh, uh, in terms of what's going well and, 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 and uh, whatever, what we're all grateful for uh, can, can also help in terms of changing our thinking, uh, uh, particularly if we're prone to worry and anxiety. Uh, the, these can be powerful kinds of um, uh, approaches. Maintaining or establishing routines, and I, I kind of underscore establishing routines uh, because we're having to come up with new routines because we're in new circumstances. And as the pandemic plays itself out and things change, we're going to need you know, additional kinds of routines. Kids can participate in, in, in setting up those routines. When are, when are you going to do certain things and when? Who in the family is going to be you know, responsible for walking the dog? Those kinds of things uh, uh, add, add uh, structure and predictability 
kids love that. That's part of that stability. If you remember those four pillars uh, at the beginning of, of uh, uh, thriving child development, uh, routine is, in, is part of that, stability is part of that. Maintaining, and I probably should have put in building uh, uh, social connections, uh, it's harder to build them in these cir current circumstances, but maintaining them is, 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 is really important given how critical that is for coping with stress. Uh, limiting exposure to the news. You know, right there are people who turn on the news and it's on all day. And uh, uh, there, there's an awful lot of uh, uh, negative emotion expressed in, on, 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 on these shows. There's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of sort of deliberate trying to get people sort of hooked into it. Uh, uh, limiting that and, and certainly making sure that children uh, have uh, uh, limited exposure, particularly young children, uh, to those uh, kinds of things. Uh, very uh, important. Uh, take care of yourself. So that other pillar, uh, mom and dad, emotional and behavioral health. Very, very important to uh, make sure that you're doing things for yourself, that you are uh, uh, not ignoring uh, your own needs. And if you do need help, uh, it's out there. Uh, people to talk to, and that's sort of the second bullet, help for both moms and dads and other family members, uh, but also kids. Uh, the, lots of people can either provide help or link you up with, uh, uh, with folks who can help with emotional and, and, and behavioral health issues. People at school, pediatricians are great resources, primary care physicians, other organizations that differ from one community to another, uh, uh, but they're out there. Uh, uh, don't um, don't be reticent. Don't be uh, don't be afraid to do that because very important for you. Very important for your uh, uh, for your kids. And then there are lots of resources on the on on the internet. I I you know I did a couple of searches in putting together this uh, presentation, and I, I was really very impressed with just how much there is in terms of uh, advice and activities and information. Uh, this is a, a, a good time, I, I think, uh, to, to live in terms of ha having that kind of information at, at our fingertips. Uh, it's, 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 it's good stuff. Uh, so I am going to end there and stop my screen sharing. And I think we have a few minutes for comments, questions. I didn't leave a lot, I'm afraid, but happy. I can check the chat box. That's okay. We don't have any questions. Oh, um, I see. I okay. Yeah. All right. But I'm if there are any uh, community members that would like to ask a question now, we have maybe time for one question. And if not, we can move on in our evening. Just getting some thanks from uh, different um, parents. Thank you for the information. Super informative. Um, and we know we have a video of this that we will also be um, sharing. Um, I'll actually link it into the same exact PDF. It's a um, Google Doc, that, that bit, the little bit.ly link that I sent out. So that we will update after the fact, okay? Perfect. Ms. Baker, do you wanna explain how to transition to, let's uh, give a round of applause to Dr. Okay. Ammerman. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Ammerman. I really appreciate it. Um, I appreciated your part about taking care of yourself. Um, I tend to work, work, work. So I appreciated um, that note and uh, I found the presentation to be very helpful. So thank you. Um, now for the next session of our presentation, uh, Mr. Anderson will put in again for anybody that was late. Um, joining into the chat, um, the PDF that you will use to navigate to our next sessions. So in order to navigate there and to get into the new sessions, you will need to leave this Zoom. So you'll hit leave and then you'll use the PDF that Mr. Anderson sent and Mrs. No sent earlier, it's in our newsletters. You will use that to choose the session that you want to go to. So we will have a session starting in one minute. This is what the PDF looks like. Mr. Anderson is showing it right now. There's a session at seven and there's a session at 725. So you'll have to do the same thing. Join one of the four sessions at seven and then you will join one of the four sessions at 
Yes, at 725. At 750, we will come back here for a closing session and Mr. Anderson will close us out for the evening. If anybody has any problems navigating to um, the next session or the 725 session, we will be on this Zoom um, and we can help you get to the session that you want. So if you have trouble, come back to this one and we can help you navigate. Other than that, we will see everybody back together at 7.50. Thank you so much, everybody.